Springtime meant it was time to get ready to plant our family garden. In the first house that we grew up in, there was a, the section in the back of the backyard there where, where every spring Dad would get out the road of tiller and till up that corner of that backyard to get it ready to plant. We also had some garden plots where my grandfather lived too as well. We'd haul that rototiller in the back of our car and, and start tilling up a plot for us and for grandpa and for our aunt and uncle. I think my parents enjoyed gardening. They would plan it. This would be a row of this, this would be a row of this, it would be this far apart. And, and when I got a little bit older and I could help plant, you know, they'd put stakes in with a wire or a string on the other side so that the row would stay straight. And I don't remember all of the details, but I, I think I remember eventually they let me kind of furrow in after the seeds were planted. And like all good fathers, they, they let you do it. And, and then when you're not looking, they come back and straighten it out a little bit. And they get the garden the way they want. Most of the time, I think we just used seeds from the store and just planted them in there. Maybe we kept a few. We didn't know we were doing organic gardening, but we were using seeds from last year. But when you put the seed in the ground, it's really all a matter of faith, isn't it? They spent so much time in that package, and what happened? You put the seed in the ground and you don't really do anything. Well, you water it maybe a little bit. And, but once you put it in, it's out of your hands, isn't it? I think that's why Jesus liked using this picture about his kingdom and the work of ruling in the hearts of people. He often used this picture of seed in a ground to, to, to let us know in our rational, concrete human minds what it's like, what it's like in the work of his kingdom. It's like putting seed in the ground. And that it takes a little a little a little bit of faith. My parents' gardens, as I remember them, they were, for the most part, I would say, successes. They grew well. They, they tended them. Mine, not so much, always. Mildly successful, bordering on somewhat failure, I think would be a good way. But no matter whether you've had gardens that were successful or somewhat failures or complete failures, we, we know what it's like to put seed in the ground on faith. The power really isn't in your hands anymore. It's in God's and the seeds. And sometimes that's hard for us to, to grasp. Sometimes that's hard for us to comprehend. Sometimes it's hard for us to accept. It's kind of like words. Words used to have a lot of power. But I think with media and advertising today, it, they lose a little bit of their power sometimes. Like the word free. That word used to have a lot of power, but now when you hear it in an advertising slogan, you think, yeah, right. Free coffee? What kind of a timeshare presentation do I have to go to to get the free coffee? Guaranteed money back. Words don't always have power anymore. But yet there are still some words that do. I think of the words, will you marry me? Those words have power still, don't they? Power to, to change two lives in an instant just when those words are uttered. And Jesus tells us this parable 
because he wants to remind us his seed has got power because it's words that have power. Our God, he's a God of power, isn't he? And you find it like me just simply amazing that this God of all power chooses to put that power in simple words. Words that convey a message. And that's why I think the words, will you marry me, have power, because they convey a specific message, and God's word says it's powerful. Because it conveys a message to human hearts. Powerful words to dads like, you know those words that your kids say or maybe write in a card on Father's Day? I know they're not always true. I know the kind of dad you are sometimes. He says it to church members. He says, I, I know you might never go into a church and start shooting and murdering people. But I know you've come and murdered them in your heart with hate sometimes. I know you've taken a look at my word and thought it was just a old bag of seeds dried and shriveled up and, and you didn't know it was trusted to do what I promised it would. He uses words like that. They're powerful. Because he intends for them to send you and me a message about who we are. What he sees. He knows the condition of our sinful heart. He knows the soil that he's planting seed in it, and yet he does it anyways. Because he knows his word has power to change sinful hearts. Change hearts with a powerful message that says, I know who you are, and I still come to you anyways. I still take the time to plan my garden, to measure out the rows, and to plant seed, and the seed comes to you because I want you to grow and to be a part of my kingdom. So we plant. And his word is powerful. Did you see it in the other readings? And he tells the prophet Jonah, go to that evil city of Nineveh, that terrorist country, and go speak the word of God to them. It'd be kind of like you saying to me, okay, Pastor Holtz, we want you to, to get on a flight to the Middle East and, and try and find some ISIS leaders and go preach the word of God to them. I think I'd be tempted to do what Jonah did. Get on a flight from Denver and not go to the Middle East, but fly somewhere to Alaska or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't think your word's powerful enough, God. To... And yet, the missionary goes, and the word is planted, and that evil terrorist nation repents. dried up seeds put in the ground because God is telling you my word has unlimited power and I plant it in you and I want you to plant it in others and then he goes on and he says, and, and, and he said again, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows, becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches 
that the birds can perch in its shade. I came across something in National Geographic on the website that they, they think they've discovered the largest tree in the world. It's a redwood that's in California, about four miles away from the nearest path. It was 379 feet tall. They said that the new growth every year on it would be enough to grow a 12 foot in diameter tree 90 feet up. Every year that's how much it grows. They estimated that if you would cut it up in planks and lay them end to end, the planks would stretch 100 miles. And the amazing thing is the seed of the redwood. If you wanted to have an ounce of the seeds, it would contain 7,000 seeds. Itty bitty seed. Big tree. He says, that's what my kingdom is like. When I plant the word, when you plant the word for me, it's got power, and it's got power because it has unlimited potential. He spoke these parables to his disciples, and he had been talking to them about what life would be like in the kingdom, what it would be like as they went out into the world and were his apostles and, and sent to plant that word, and, and maybe they we're getting a little bit discouraged because he said, well, the kingdom of God is like this. It's like this guy sowing seed and, and some of it falls on some bad ground and only a little bit of it falls on good ground and the disciples are like, great, thanks. He says, oh, it's kind of like, well, like you go planting and, and, and you're sowing seeds and all of a sudden the seeds, they sprout, but then along with them come weeds and it's not going to be easy. Great. Thanks for the morale booster, Jesus. Working in your kingdom sounds like fun. And then he tells them these two parables. My word has unlimited power. It has unlimited potential. See this little seed? My kingdom will be massive. It started with 12 guys. They had seed. It started in a little place in the Middle East, and it has spread its branches and reaches Greeley, Colorado. Our national church body started with just a, a handful of pastors in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it has grown. This congregation started with just a handful, five family members. He says, my word has unlimited potential for a congregation, for an individual's heart, because my word has power. And so then we repent. Of the times we act like Jonah and think that God's word is just a shriveled up bag of seeds. And it can't do much. We look at the people of Nineveh. We look at the people Paul talked about in Colossae. He says, your faith is growing and people around the world know it. And people around the world are believing this and producing fruits of faith. So when I doubt, when I wonder, when I see the, the seed on the, the path that's getting eaten up by the birds, and remember it's power and potential. For a heart like mine, for hearts like yours, for, for hearts of people that you know that, that you, you want the seed to grow. Or you want this, the seed to be able to produce a little bit more fruit. He says, trust me. I've got this bag. This bag of seeds. It's powerful. 
My parents had a plan for their gardens. Straight rows so far apart and and with their planning, with their efforts, grew. Produced a crop of fruits, vegetables. Your Heavenly Father has said, come with me. I'm planting a garden. I want you to plant the seeds. Oh, I know you won't do it so well. I know sometimes you, you won't always do it perfectly. I know it always won't be a success in your eyes. He says the day is coming when it's harvest time. And you'll see just how big my garden has grown. To include you and many others. Until that day comes, God promises to give you his word with power. Amen.